Hello, welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, my newspaper tells me that today is the most depressing day of the year, which is only uh, only just begun. So I'm going to try and cheer everyone up with a puzzle. And we're going to try a new type of puzzle for the channel. Uh, it's a puzzle called Araf, A-R-A-F, um, which means purgatory, I believe, in um, in Turkish. Uh, the puzzle was christened by Serkan Yurakli, the, uh, the amazing constructor, uh, from Turkey, and I've chosen uh, a puzzle by uh, a Turkish compatriot of his, uh, Murat Kantonta. Uh, we've done a couple of Murat's puzzles before on the channel. They are always stellar. So uh, we're going to have a look at this in a moment, and I'll talk you through the rules. Very important to understand the rules of this puzzle um, before you try uh, and do anything complicated. But I want to mention also it's the start of the month, and this evening I have released our Patreon reward for January. Um, so this is the extra content for those of you who kindly sponsor us on Patreon. Mark and I massively appreciate it. It really does help us um, to produce videos every day. Um, and uh, this month what we've got is a chain of Sudokus for you. So there's uh, three interconnected Sudokus, a, a classic Sudoku, a sandwich Sudoku and a diagonal Sudoku. Um, and yeah, I think, I think they're quite good. There's a tiny little meta there as well. Um, and a bonus puzzle indeed, because Christoph Seliger has kindly um, donated his Christmas present to Mark and I, which was an amazing cubic um, sandwich Sudoku uh, to, to you guys on Patreon too. So there are actually four puzzles um, uh, to patrons this month. Um, it's $2 uh, to sponsor us on Patreon. That gets you the... Um, uh, the extra content and for three dollars you also get a video on how to solve that extra content so uh, anyone who's in a position to do that and might consider it we would really appreciate it um, now let's get to a raf and look at the rules I, there's an example puzzle on the screen i think this is probably the best way to to learn about this puzzle and we need to divide the grid and you can see the grid contains some numbers um, uh, we need to divide it into regions basically um, and each cell has to be part of a region and each region needs to contain exactly two of these clue squares um, so two numbered squares um, now the, the tricky part of this is that the regions need to which we're obviously going to have two numbers in each regions the size of the region in terms of the number of squares needs to lie between the, the numbers that you put in it so let's have a look at this three and this six down the right hand side you can see that they are part of a region of size four. And that's because four lies between three and six. It would have been possible for this region to have size five as well, but it wouldn't be possible for it to have any other size. It couldn't have less than three, it couldn't have greater than six, it couldn't have three and it couldn't have six either. So strictly the size of the regions must lie between the two numbers that you put in that region. Now, if you're anything like me, um, well, A, you'll be a puzzle nut, but B, you'll find these, these rules a little bit daunting when you first read them. I certainly did way, way back when, when I first looked at a RAF. I remember thinking, how on earth does one go about solving these puzzles? Well, they are solvable. You just need a bit of, you know, sometimes a little bit of a hint to get started. So I'm hoping we'll be able to, or I'll be able to solve this one um, by Murat for you now. Uh, if you want to have a go, click at the link, click on the link under the video. That'll take you to our webpage where you can play along. And probably looking at this, I'm going to use colours today to highlight the different regions. So, how do you start an Araf puzzle? Well, my tip, such as it is, is not to focus on big numbers. So ordinarily your eyes might be drawn to some of these huge numbered squares. and You might try to think about, well, what could these connect to? But I find this to be a bit futile with the RAF puzzles because the problem is that you know, if we take this 12, for example, it can connect with any other, um, any other circled square apart from the 13 or the 11, but everything else is fair game, providing the 12 can reach it. Um, which which gives an awful lot of flexibility. So what I try and do is I find a small numbers and b small numbers close to each other because they are typically very restricted. Um, so a simple example would be this four here. This four it cannot be in a region with the five that's next to it 
because there is no number that lies between 4 and 5 and we know that the areas will always be an integer. Um, it obviously can't join with a 4 because those are the same numbers. So this 4, for example, it can't be in a region with this square, this square, or this square. The 1 would be too far away. Um, but still there's a bit of there's a bit of latitude there, so that's probably not where we need to start. Uh, let me just stare at this for a second. I th yeah, there might be something going on down in this corner. Look, let's have a look at this because yes. Yes, well, there's a little bit of logic we can do. Let's look at this four and ask ourselves, what could that be friends with in the, in the in the puzzle? It can't be friends with the four that's next to it or this four. This two, it can't be friends with either because if we try and attach the four to the two, it would take at least four squares to do that. And we know that if a four and a two are in the same region, then that region would have to have size three. So the four isn't connected to the two and the 4 can't connect to the 3 either because there's no number between 4 and 3 and in any case that's 5 cells. So what we can deduce from this, which is quite cool, is that the 4 has to go upwards. Its region has to extend this way. It can't then marry up with that one. So we, then this is how we do a rough. We try and build up this pattern. Now let me look at this for a bit longer. Right, now the 3 is important, I think, because what can the 3 now marry up with? Well, it can't marry up with the 2, it can't marry up with the 4, it can't marry up with this 1, because again, if we go 3 squares, this region has size 3. If the 1 and the 3 are in the same region, it should have size 2. So this has to come out this way. And it's going to have to find a friend somewhere else in the grid. So let's carry on in this direction. The 1 now must extend upwards. So that means the 3 goes up another square. Ah, now we can do a little bit of logic with this 4 and this 2 now. And the reason we can do that is that there's only, if we look at this white, white region here, you can see there's only one area of escape, and that would be up this little chute here. So, if the 4 is not in an area with the 2, what would it, which area could it be part of? It would have to come this way and go upwards. But you can see this breaks the puzzle, because now this 2 is in its own area. There's nothing this 2 can connect to. Ergo, these two are in the same region, but we don't... Well, we know the region is of size 3, and we know, I guess, therefore, either this one or this one must be must be the complete completion of the area, but we don't know which of those is true. Um, let me just look at this for a second. Well, we know the 4... The 4 can't now come down the grid, so it can't, because of this green 3, or green area which is part of the 3, the 4 is going to have to go up, 1, 2, 3, 4, ah, now, yes, okay, so now the 4, let's look at what the options are, what could this be part of? And it, it can't get as far as this 7, because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, but we know if the 4 and the 7 are in the same region, the area would have to be less than 7. And the same is true of 9, isn't it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so the 4, it could be part of the 8, I think. One, two, yeah, obviously, that it can join with the 8, and it could join with the 14. But it can't join with the 14. Ah, this is very cunning. This is lovely, lovely puzzle design. Let's look at this. So, 
if this 4 joins with the 14, and now we don't have to know how it joins to the 14, we just have to imagine in our minds there is some way that this 4, there's a blue wall that connects this 4 with this 14. Now if there's a blue wall, it doesn't matter what it looks like, let's imagine it looks like that just for the sake of an exposition. The key point to realise is now this 4 and this 2 must be in the same region. We know that region will be of size 3, so it would look like that. And now the 5 is broken here. The 5 can find no friend that meets the rules of the puzzle. It can't connect to the 6 because there's no integer between 5 and 6. And it can't get to this 2 without taking 5 squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's too big. So, this is rather cool, because now what we know is that this 4 connects to this 8. So let's make the 8 blue. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's going to use 6 squares to get to the, to the blue 8. But that Again, this will create a blue wall somehow. So this 3 now is not coming up this way. The 3 and, say, the 14 are not connected. The 3 must come this way. It obviously can't connect to the 1 because then it would have to be in a region of size 2. So the 3 must come this way, which means the purple must come this way. Now this, yeah, this is good because the purple region can't connect to the 5 because let's count the squares that would mean five there would be five squares in the purple region and if the one and a five in the region there would need to be either two three or four squares so this must turn upward yes this must turn upwards and now the three must hit the ten that's the only option one two three four five six seven so there's still some play in this region we can still add squares to the green region, which is something you have to be careful about with Arif puzzles. But, but we have made progress. Now this 2 and this 5 are connected. But again, we don't know whether this region is size 3 or size 4. And we need to find a home for the 1 region. So, And this is interesting. It's interesting because the, this 1 region is already of size 5. So we know that whatever connects with this one has to be greater than that. And that means we are going to have to go quite far afield. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The 11 is possible because this would be the 10th square of the region. 9, 10. Ah, the 12 is not possible. And the 13 is not possible. Um, both of those regions would be too large. So it's actually connecting to this 11. And it's connecting that squares in. And we don't yet know whether it's which one of these is, is also in the region. But you can see, I don't know if you, if you can see, but I, I find it absolutely gorgeous how cleverly this puzzle has been put together. Every deduction has been, you know, on a linear journey that we've had to find. And it's got a narrow solving path. That's a good way of describing it. It's, it but it, it's so well put together. And you can see now that getting this purple region like this isolates this three. So this three has to come this way. Let's make that red again. Um, and the blue region, this blue wall that we're eventually going to have, isolates this one. This one can't find a friend down here. So it's going to have to come up. Now that is interesting. How much colour shall I use for that? I'll use grey. So it's got to go one more. Now the three has to... Well, the three can only now join up with the five. And this is a size four, this region. And that's exactly what it needs to be. So this region is, is now complete. One, two, three. We don't know whether this one connects with the seven or the nine. We know it's one of them, but we don't know which one. Right, so what do we do next? Uh, ah, 
Ah, now, I see. I think I see anyway. How do we get... We've noted this region is of size 3, so one of these is in. Now, that means that there's a minimum of three squares in this bottom right-hand corner that I need to reach, and I'm going to have to reach them using either the blue region or the green region or both. One, two, three, four, five, six. So given the four and the eight are connected and must be at least six squares to connect directly, this region can cut, could reach could go exactly one more down. It can't reach this corner square. So this corner square is going to have to be part of the green region. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, five, six, seven. So this is green eight. That's green nine. And now the green region is full. So this has to be blue. This then has to be red as there's nothing else that can get to it. This square, the only thing that can get to this square is the purple region. So the purple region is now finished. The green region is finished. This red region is finished. And this square is very interesting now. This one here, because we, can, we can't get to this square with the blue region. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, we know the blue region can be a maximum of seven. So there's only one region that can connect this square, and that's the gray region. So that must all be gray. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now the gray region can't connect to the seven, because otherwise it's too large. It connects to the nine. Wow which fixes the blue region. <laughs> oh, it's just stunning. Now the four and the two are in the same uh, region, but we don't know which of these is in. We know that it can't stop with just these two squares because it's of, it's of size three. And now let's look at this square. So this is the other tip for a RAF puzzles is not to actually look at the numbered squares at all, but look at the, the gaps and try and ask what, how do you reach a gap? Now this square is interesting to me because I know this region can't reach it. So I have to reach this square somehow using other squares. Now, if we, let's ask some simple questions here. Is this 3 in the same region as this 5? Now, if it is, you can see it can't connect over the top here without isolating the 2. So it would have to connect down this way. And the problem here is it's already of size 4. That's the maximum a 3 and a 5 could be. So that wouldn't reach this square. Ergo, the 3 and the 5 are not in the same region. Now, if the 3 and the 5 are not in the same region, what, what is the 5's partner in the puzzle? It must be the 2, because that's the only other circled square it could reach. So these two squares are in the same region, and that region is of size 3 or 4. And as it's three or four, it can't get here still. This square, the, we'd need five squares to get to this square and we can't have them. So this square must be in a region with the three. Whoa, now that must be massive because now, yes, look, now we've got four here already, so it can't connect with the five. It's got to keep going. These are in the same region now. So those those actually are forced to be like that because we know they can't be of size 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Well, it has to be the 12, doesn't it? It's got to be. That's the only square it can get to, which isn't going to break the rules. It can it can never get to the 13, because the 13 is in its own little basket here. It can't get to the 14, and it's already of size, it's already of size 9 at least. So we're looking for a, 
uh, a number that's greater than 9. So it's the 12 it connects to. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it must do that efficiently. It must do it directly there. So now the 13 and the 1 are in the same region, but we don't know don't yet know how much of this region is also going to be in that space. But these three squares down here need to be filled with just what we're left with. So we need the 5 and the 2. This must be size 4 and this must be red, which is allowed because this can be size 4. Right, so there we go. We've done that bit. The 4 must come out and can't connect to another four. So now I'm going to have to select my colors carefully here. Maybe I go back to green. And well, well, this is it. This is interesting, actually. What connects to this four? Because this has to come out a bit. And now the four has to come this way. And now it's already of size six. So it's got to be, the seven is too far away. It's got to connect to the 14. So the four is connected to the 14. So if we imagine the line joining them is like this, you can see we've got to be very, very careful with what we've got left in here. This four is going to have to bend round like this it's going to have to attach to the 6. That means the 5 and the 2 are in the same region. That region could extend. The 4 and the 6, this is the size of their region. They must be in a 5 region. They are in a 5 region. Those must be green. The 5 here is going to attach to the 7. And what we've got to do now is very carefully ensure that we don't breach any of these region sizes. So this square can only be part of the 414 region. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we've still got, we still can go in up to three more with this one. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. One more with this one. One more with this one. The 5 and the 7 have to connect, so How are we going to do that? One, two, three. They must be size six. Four, five, six. Okay, so this five cannot go upwards. That's what we can deduce from that. So we need to fill the, these four squares using only this and this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this has to be like that, because it can be a maximum of 13. That allows us to use this one that we've got free in this space. So this, and now I need to, I'm going to have to use everything here. This needs to be purple, which makes this the maximum it can be. This needs to be gray, makes this the maximum it can be. And that just, I think, gives me the latitude to make that size six, which is what it needs to be. And and we've now, yes, and now these squares are all yellow and that finishes it. What a beautiful, beautiful puzzle. And very unusual actually for an Arath puzzle to be symmetric at the start. I've seen, I don't know, I must have seen 10 of these over the years and they're never symmetrical. They always have numbers all over the place. Um, but this one from Murat is completely symmetrical and had a beautiful, beautiful path through it. I loved that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Something a bit different. Um, and um, yeah, we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.